again. Uh, we are back uh, together for this um, second part of the uh, the meeting, which is more of an interactive, uh, 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 you know, discussion. Uh, but uh, before starting the discussions, uh, I think it would be good to first ask uh, from our colleague, uh, Professor Webi Kalikiti from the University of Zambia. Uh, Webi was instrumental in uh, hosting and organizing the first uh, um, uh, meeting uh, in 2012 that really laid the, the roadmap of a number of the activities that were mentioned, uh, especially with regard to this, uh, uh, these conferences and this, the, the creation of an Africa-Asia open platform. Uh, Webby? Can you open with it? No, he, he didn't act, doesn't act it. Uh, not. Okay, Webby is not active yet, sorry. Uh, and Kai is not uh, active either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, we will uh, give the floor to... Uh, uh, oh, Kai yeah. now is here, so maybe... Sorry. Be Okay, so uh, Webby will talk later if we manage to reach him uh, again. But uh, the other person I wanted to ask to say a few words is uh, Dr. Kai Amo. She works for the University of Kyoto Seka uh, in uh, Japan. And as you know, the president of Kyoto Seka University is uh, a Japanese man of Malian origin. And uh, so they have had, uh, they have developed already a number of initiatives uh, on Africa Asia, and they will host the next ICAS conference in 2012 in Kyoto in August. 2021. 21. 21. <laughs> oh my God, in 2021. <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, Kai, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Philippe, and thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad to join you here. And from Kyoto, it's like uh, 11 o'clock at night, so I'm, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, yes, I am, I would like to introduce because uh, about Kyoto University and its new African Asian Center, culture, contemporary culture center. And also we are opening next year new facility of global culture. So I, I, will, te I will be teaching in this uh, new facility. And Kyoto Seika University is like, is um, to inter introduce a little bit. It's a university of liberal arts, so created in 1968. So it's with the str student struggle, and we try to create university uh, with the principle of liberty and the, the um, diversity. So yeah, I'm also working in diversity center in the, the in, in Seika. So I hope that the um, new discussion will be open to talk about the diversity in each Asia or Africa um, um, in, in, in global relations. And yeah, um, to talk about the, this uh, new center and new facility, we try to exchange directly with Asian and African institutions because um, traditionally Japanese African studies is created in 1950s, but it's really focused on specific domain uh, areas like um, medicine or uh, uh, primatology and anthropology of traditional societies. So Lloyd have talked about the um, the um, uh, uh, where was the word. Um, uh, Orientalism, sorry. Uh, so Orientalism, it's, it's the same thing in Japan that uh, many scholars working about Africa is uh, try to to work on the, the traditional society, uh, for example, people living in the forest. And since um, recent years, it has been it has been changed. There are more and more young scholars working about the, the urbanization or youth movement. Um, contemporary culture and art. And yeah, that's uh, why we try to focus on the contemporary cultures uh, as the University of Seika have a different faculty of arts, like um, um, textile, manga, digital arts, 
but also they are focused on the, the Kyoto traditional art and crafts. So it will be interesting to collaborate with different African institutions in the 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 type of research like about the the traditional architecture, conservation of um, patrimony, or different subjects about around the the traditional arts and crafts. Uh, like Indigo, one of our researchers is also work, uh, now working about the conservation of Indigo culture. So maybe we have so many things in, in common in, in different African um, society. So yeah, and also we um, try to open the office in Dakar. Normally this year we should go to Dakar to open the our office because we try to send uh, several scholars and students each year um, to do some field work in, in, in Africa, not only in Senegal, but the Senegal will be the base in, in our um, um, research projects because there are other universities who are working about in English speaking countries. And that's Uzubi Sako is from Mali. We try to, to open the doors to different Francophone countries as well. So yeah, uh, we try to also to focus on the new themes like um, street art and also collaborating with different Asian scholars. What is interesting is, is in here in Japan is about the the history is really uh, contradictory because Japan is also uh, colonizers at the same time they are in the position um between the west in the the position of it's not very really colonized but in the, the, the position of the the weakness um toward the west so there are many research about the, the asian countries and also about different countries in 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 africa or in europe we try to reorganize our knowledge about these different topics created in japan because the most of the knowledge is not translated so it will be interesting to share these different uh, heritage with African scholars directories or Asian scholars from different Asian countries and also um, to to work together on the field I'm for example I'm really interested in working with different scholars coming from Asia because Japan is uh, Japanese studies is separated from every uh, Asian studies which is really um, uh, bizarre, but it, in Japan we we have Japanese studies tradition and also we have Asian studies. So I think we we should decolonize also different um, system and and research domain that have been created historically in collaborating with different scholars coming from outside. So working on the field together with African scholars and Asian scholars can be the um, maybe um, uh, a new initiative that can also break the ice for these different traditions created in Japan. And yeah, that can also be interesting to, to do something together, just to do something with different scholars from Asian and African scholars. So in the ICAS, I have just um, talked with Sako last, last week about organizing side events or a panel at least uh, with, with, you, with you if you are coming to Kyoto. So yeah, I, you will be welcome. I hope that the, the sanitary situation will be okay for everyone to come to Japan. Otherwise we can also organize something online. I, I prefer face-to-face -face communication, but I hope we, we can join anyway together to discuss about our future collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Kay, uh, for this uh, short but uh, very meaningful introduction. Um, I want to know if uh, Webby is now... Uh, no. Webby? Okay. Webby is not still not available. We can't. Uh, I've been on text with Webby and he, he was answering, so I don't know uh, what to. Okay. Well, um, 
In this case, we should maybe open the floor for, uh, for discussion. Uh, um, maybe the first way to do so will be to read uh, questions uh, that have come into the, the box. Uh, so uh, maybe, um, Stacy, if you want to uh, also introduce yourself and, and uh, you know, open the floor and maybe also mention your, from your perspective. You, you are not on, so. Stacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Stacy, uh, Stacy Lynx, and I'm from South Africa. And I've very recently been brought into the fold here of the Institute uh, uh, for uh, Asian Studies. I myself am a scholar on China Africa relations, and my research finds itself uh, in the intersections of critical international relations and critical international human rights. Um, so I myself in my own research often take a very uh, decolonial and or post-colonial perspective. So a lot of what has been said today um, resonates with, with what I do. Um, perhaps just to, to follow on uh, in terms of what was mentioned earlier in terms of the, the future conference being in South Africa, hopefully. Um, I think that, uh, you know, that's a great opportunity. Being from South Africa myself, I, I obviously welcome that. And uh, I think South Africa has a lot of introspection to do in terms of its own decolonial agenda and its own position on the continent. You know, uh, South Africa has struggled for a long time with its, its identity on the continent, trying to kind of straddle or be a, a middle ground um, in some senses. And uh, we see that increasingly South Africa is still grappling with this question. So I think, you know, having these discussions and topics um, open for debate, debate in, in South Africa and welcoming a, a wide range of colleagues um, will be extremely beneficial um, for us and, and everyone involved. Um, so I've been following the chat quite a bit here and there aren't too many questions, um, although one has just actually come in. Um, and it's from Lalita and Lalita asks, she would like to know what is the idea behind this Africa Knows Conference? Uh, I feel odd when we talk about Asia-Africa connections in a conference where only Africa knows. Um, interesting and very good questions. Maybe, maybe we should start with that one um, and then I can get on to some, some other questions. Is there anyone in particular that wants to maybe... So Tom, Tom is on the list. If Tom could maybe join, that would be good. Is he still on the list? Yeah, maybe. And I hope that you can hear me. Yes. Um, it's, the title is a bit of a wink. Um, a couple of years ago, we organized a conferences uh, uh, which were called Africa Works. And that is after a book that was called Africa Works and that was full of stories that Africa didn't work. So that was a counterpoint. Now, again, um, we thought if you really talk about knowledge about knowledge, and that's what this conference is all about, and about the necessity to, to, to decolonize minds about knowledge, then we need a provocative title, and we need a title that has a an exclamation mark. So it's Africa knows with the exclamation mark. And it has two uh, ways of pronunciation. One is Africa knows, and the other is Africa knows. So, um, the second one is most important, and that is to, to really put an emphasis on the fact that within Africa, there is a massive development of uh, both formalized and informal knowledge, and that within Africa, there is much more autonomous thinking about how Africa positions itself in the global knowledge economy. And we would like to create um, ideas and, and um, experiences, share experiences about how this new uh, position of Africa and Africans in this international debate, how that develops and how Europe and others, Asians for instance, but basically Europe 
how, how they should relate to that. So that, that's the idea behind the conference. And you can see if you follow all the other panels and last week's starting panels, how rich the debate is and how also provocative uh, the title obviously is because it, it creates lots and lots of debates. Thank you. Maybe, uh, I don't know if uh, Lalita or Abdu want to uh, pitch in to answer Tom. Abdu? Oh, he's, he's, he's connected. Uh, Lalita? Yeah. Ah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Abdu, no, okay, well, sorry, there's no, we see if there's an answer. Uh, or Lloyd? Yeah. It's not, okay. it's not Anyone wants to answer? Please raise a hand. They can be found here on the right. Yeah, yeah but or people don't know. People don't know how. Or type in the chat box. Or if you can type something can, on the chat box I can turn in guise of answer, that would be good. Oh, well, it is alive. Like, 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 okay. Yeah, but there's no... Okay. Okay, uh, maybe next question. Uh... Yeah, um, so Abdu replied to say that, um, and he said that Tom's answer is already very clear. Um, so that's good. Uh, no other responses to that specifically. Um, there's a question that's just come up, and it's a question to Abdu. Um, asking or saying that you announced three obstacles at the end but in the end i only heard about the institutions right so a dysfunctional framework or did i miss something and i think uh yeah the question is is directed to abdu um and is regarding the end of your presentation where you were presenting kind of uh, the obstacles to i think the de decolonizing uh, cooperation Perhaps you can elaborate on that, Abdu. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So actually, I, I was uh, trying to uh, to show uh, if we talk about in terms of uh, obstacles, uh, we do have. Uh, not exactly three, but I, two men, you know. And I was saying that the, the first one is uh, related to the real uh, stakes of these debates. The first obstacle we have is the way that our current governments are understanding what is going on. So they are not really uh, real, reliable uh, for us to navigate through these uh, very strategic and important questions. And that's also part of what we need to decolonize, the question and the issues of power that exists at that frame, the way that in Africa, we are trying to organize our participation of this uh, international uh, uh, con ongoing conversation. And that is something that needs to be assumed uh, of course, in my very longest text, I also uh, pick it up another kind of obstacle, which is very important, is the lack of real critical Pan-Africanism uh, ideology. And that has some consequences. The consequences that have is the way that usually in Europe or in US or in, in Asia, wherever you can consider the place in the world, the way that the international project pick it up guys from Africa is not at the best interest for Africa. That's what also I'm saying. Uh, and the third aspect is the uh, uh, ordinary culture. We can find uh, whether in uh, Asia or in Europe or in USA, that's all place that really need to go through this necessary and urgent work of decolonize themselves. Because even though they are very nice guys, whatever you want, the real problem we have 
they are not so much helpful. And I can take this to answer a little uh, word when you say, okay, how we can take advantage? So I don't know exactly, but we can all, we can uh, never start by uh, drawing the situation, by, by, by describing the situation. And maybe if we are able to describe in a very objective way, what is really going on here, we could be able to be in a very front line. And I do hope that this kind of network can really do that work. But we need also to talk in a certain way uh, between us. Yeah. Stacey, so that was what I wanted to say. Thanks. Great, great. I think that that's made it uh, a lot clearer for us um, in terms of what you meant. And we also had uh, following up on that is I think a lot of the questions that were asked in the chat went, you know, were around this issue of decolonizing and how we go about decolonizing, right? Um, how do we decolonize research agendas when we have the, you know, these kind of neoliberalist uh, 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 inputs from our institutions, right? Where, where we end up with so much admin, this, this and that, and it takes away from our core business, so to speak, right? Um, as researchers and knowledge producers, I would say. Um, related to the issue of decolonization, uh, Kay also said, you know, perhaps we need to consider what decolonization means in different contexts, right? So what does decolonization mean and look like in Asia versus Africa? And then within those spaces, what, what does decolonization look and um, uh, what does it look like and what does it mean? Um, uh, some of the other questions that came up, and, and again, I'm posing these and please feel free to, I think there's a raise hand icon. So if you want to make a point on any of these points that I'm raising or questions that were brought up, please, please do use that or use the chat. Um, and I think we also, I think Abdu mentioned, you know, how do we break the classical academic spaces, right? Um, and this kind of uh, uh, brings up the, the question that I have faced in my own research, and I'm going to use this opportunity a little, um, between post-colonialism and decolonial approaches, right? So this idea of using the master's tools to dismantle the master's house, how, to what degree do we use that and to what degree do we completely break from that, um, I think is, is an important right. question. Lloyd has his hand up, so let's go to you, Lloyd. Maybe you have some answers for me. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself, I think, Lloyd, um, because at the moment you're not live. Yeah, that's it, that's it. There we go. Right on, on Abdul's point. Uh, hmm? He, he makes a, a, a very interesting uh, a point about enrollment, which is the word he used, where he says that, well, the partnerships that are constructed between, you know, the, 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 the Asian partners, uh, our Northern partners, and, and Africa, uh, in terms of those who then get into the, the spaces, do not really tend to, to benefit uh, uh, the continent. Um, I think the point that he makes is, 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 is very relevant. Uh, and I would connect that to, to the larger question, uh, the, the Chiwenzuan question, you know, Chiwenzu, the Nigerian scholar, with whom I'm in close contact now in, in Ghana. In his recent works, he, he draws attention in a very perceptive way, uh, unlike any other you know, African scholar that I that I that I've been exposed to, to to the question of African weakness in in, in the international, if you like, uh, 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 um, and and I think that that really is a, is a big question that we need to confront as we talk about Africa, Asia, Africa, uh, uh, Europe, Africa, the West interactions, because as one scholar indicated. Africa has tended to be more or less interpreted under a sign of crisis. And, and I think we must be clear about all these interactions at a certain level. It is about how for us on the continent, we can move away from this 
position of weakness uh, into, into, into one of, you know, if you like, intelligent power, uh, if not the traditional conception of, 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 of power as, as dominance and control and exploitation and all of that. But, but power in terms of that capacity to deal with our existential questions, you know. So, of course, we want to understand Asia, we want to engage Asia, but for me, constantly the question would be as well, for what, right? Well, knowledge, yeah, for knowledge sake, that is one, one legs of the, of the, of the, of the whole, uh, a, a, a way of looking at, at things. But it also has to be the ways in which, you know, through these interactions, you know, the kind of states that, that we construct, the kinds of polities that we construct, the ways in which we can respond to the question of the environment and, and the, um, the age of the Anthropocene and, 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 and all of those questions. I think they, they really, really matter. But sometimes I think in, in the ways in which we discuss these things, uh, we tend to gloss over that particular problematic, if you like, as if it's, uh, it's heretical to, to engage with that. But I think if to borrow Chiwenzu's thinking, we are creating these centers in order that Africa self-actualizes. You know, that, 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 that is, that is, uh, that is that is particularly important in, 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 in the framings of these interactions. And I think my, my, my friend Sek says or construes that in, in, in what he says, in what he describes as a, a forceful Pan-African, you know, uh, 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 ideology, you know. So that question, I think, is, 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 is on the, the, the front banner and, and it ought to be there, you know, as we think through these questions, uh, 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 you know, regarding Asia, decolonization and all of that. The existential aspects of, of the interaction will not go away. I mean, we look at COVID, for example, and, and we saw the events that took place, for example, in Guangzhou where Africans, black African racism, to be specific, was, was, was writ large on the, on the global stage in, in, in China, you know, the, 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 the kind of brutality that was, 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 was directed at, at black Africans. Uh, and, and, and that is particularly shocking, you know, given the, 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 the purported, uh, 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 you know, narratives about Africa, China, uh, uh, solidarity and, and all of that. You know. So there are still questions that remain, you know, when it comes to, to Africa and the African and the black African for that matter. Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, the, 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 the reality about our place in the world as a collective and also as individuals. And, and for me, increasingly, I'm beginning to think about that very hard. I've actually done a paper on this that's, that's, in, that's, that's gone out for review, where I really take on the Chinese and, and Asia on this race question that has, has been buried. I think we need to bring some of these things up so that the terrain becomes you know, far more uh, 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 removed of its, you know, unspeakables, if you like, because we need to speak about all the very hard things. And I think that's where my good friend uh, uh, Sek is gesturing towards, the, 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 the weakness question of, 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 of Africa as a collective and as, 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 as human beings, you know. I mean, we can't even travel easily. I mean, when we have to come to the IIAS and, and, and all of that, simply because we are from Accra, you face obstacles. You know, you can't move because of, of, of a certain, you know, uh, uh, 
if you like, uh, 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 view of, 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 of who you are embedded in history, of course, European history, for sure, in the last 500 years, and the ways in which all of that has, 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 has you know, uh, uh, had a certain, you know, conditioning effect on, 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 on existence, both at the level of, of the mundane and, and also in terms of some of these bigger questions that we are looking at. And, and, and as I think up, these questions now really give me sleepless nights, you know. So in all of these interactions, these are matters that, that uh, we have to confront, uh, really. Uh, and I thank uh, SEC for, for, for these questions. Thanks. Thanks so much for that, Lloyd. Um, I think there are a lot of points there that we can definitely integrate into our future writings and cooperations, and also many points you bring up in terms of the various arms, right, and levels at which at which this uh, this problem occurs, right. So within, how can we use the diaspora for these goals? How can we within Africa kind of uh, come to a common understanding? I think is are, are some of the issues that are that are really important. Um, Kojo asks uh, to Abdu, he says, you suggest creating space without international cooperation. Does that not lead to isol isolationism and thereby forfeit the positive contributions of those elsewhere who see the need to decolonize education? Um, maybe Abdu, you could uh, speak to that issue. Thanks very much, Kojo. I, I think this question is very, very important. And I think that is one of the very first and spontaneous uh, uh, feeling we can have when we start to talk about this kind of issues. And uh, as we all could hear when Lloyd was uh, sharing his point uh, earlier, uh, it is this really deep uh, needs for guys here to say their words. And we, I think that's something we should definitely uh, take more care. So then Kojo, you have missed the second part of my, of my uh, sentence. The first part was, yes, we, 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 we have to manage to be able to go further when we did not uh, met with what we are expecting within the partnership we can uh, and we and and we are obliged to have with asian or northern uh, institutions we we are not we, we are obliged to try to find a way to push over and to and, and to and to move forward sorry my print is uh, doing uh, its own business i don't know why so uh yeah then Kojo, that was the first part of my saying and the second part was even though we are able to go without international cooperation we do take care to to to, to be aware with this international cooperation to go to dialogue with them because it's it's necessary it will be uh, un novel you uh, unavoidable to to be together with with it in order order to frame another way to, to, to build, uh, uh, constructing international knowledge. So then, yeah, the matter was not to get ourselves isolated, but to get ourselves autonomous is very different. Yeah, very loud and clear. I think that's a, a, a very good point that you, want to... that you make. Kojo, do you want to uh, respond to that? You have to uh, unmute yourself on the top bar. No. Yeah, oh, yes. It. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I understand. I am um, uh, the second point. My my position was that there is now a critical mass of academics in the global north who also share the vision of decolonizing education. And therefore, if we created a space that didn't, didn't give the possibility of cooperation, then Africa will further be moving into an intellectual isolation. But I understand his point that he makes a, a distinction between isolationism 
and autonomy. And I think um, it's clear, I understand it now. Okay, um, then maybe as uh, one of the last questions coming up, um, there is a question here about, and it's a question to all, um, from Mohamudu. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Mohamudu. Mohamudu. Um, I'm wondering if the idea is to have Asian studies in Africa, African studies in Asia, African, Asian, Asian, African studies everywhere, centers and countries at a sub-regional level. What is the model of implementation? And he continues by saying, I'm a bit weary of fragmentation, right? So a scramble to create all of these centers everywhere, um, a fashionable, but perhaps unsustainable way of going about this in a context of scarce resources, which I think is a very valuable uh, point. And perhaps even with these kind of centers, we replicate um, certain colonial models and pedagogies, right? Um, so a question for just uh, for everyone to kind of think about, please raise your hand. There should be a raise hand icon somewhere there. Um, and we can take some reflections on, on that. Or perhaps if you would like to expand on, on your own point, um, that would also be welcome. Any points of reflection on that, about creating these centers um, across the board? Well, if I may, I could say from, uh, from uh, our perspective, from where we come from, in, in, in a, from a European institution uh, uh, perspective that is also committed to try to uh, engage with what we call decolonization of knowledge at different levels, as it has been discussed, um, there is a fundamental basic question of infrastructure. And, 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 and of course, uh, if we discuss infrastructure, if we discuss structure, institutions, uh, and money, we are, of course, in a way, a complice, a complice to the, 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 the economy of higher education as it has been uh, established in, from a very Western model uh, point of view. But at the end, on the other hand, this is, I think, also uh, the, the, the most... Uh, uh, the that's the, the first opportunity that we have to try to engage with this uh, 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 imbalance uh, 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 framework. So, to me, uh, yes, there is a risk potentially of, of fragmentation. On the other hand, when I think uh, uh, an institute like uh, the Institute in, uh, uh, in at the University of Ghana, Center for Asian Studies, can really build itself as a very strong uh, power engine, or uh, it can be a, a whole a curriculum program at the University of Ghana, or also uh, Gaston Berger, or where, wherever, in, in my sense, these are also very important elements, steps that are needed. Likewise with the, the center in Thailand that tentatively, potentially, has the potential to be a, a kind of a platform across Southeast Asia uh, uh, to engage with uh, African uh, and other partners. So, we need to be also pragmatic. There is always, of course, this question of, of um, you know, the falling into new epistemological uh, 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 traps, but there is also the need uh, somehow to, uh, to establish some groundwork. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's in the same line that I would, uh, I understand uh, Abdul's uh, understand, uh, uh, point that there is first the need to uh, address one's own, uh, 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 you know, uh, limitations and, and, and being, you know, uh, intellectual or, or institutional that prevents, I mean, from a point of view uh, of an African institute, it, uh, 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 to, to engage fully uh, and embrace uh, that, that, uh, that um, level of, of um, cooperation, so-called cooperation that, that is at hand. 
uh, um, but um, we have we have to live with what we have, and and, uh, and the same from a northern point of view or western point of view, uh, we are also very much entrapped in 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 in, in models that we inherited uh, uh, from. But if we try from within to open new spaces and 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 and, and open new questions uh, 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 and, and engage in new kinds of, of collaboration like uh, HAP Humanities Across Borders I think is a good example that tries to go beyond the the, 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 the institutional disciplinary national and even continental uh, entrapments uh, I think uh, this is something we need to uh, engage uh, in as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, and I think that, again, relates to that point of, you know, uh, to what extent do we use the master's tool to dismantle the master's house? Um, Lloyd, you have, well, Lalita did um, respond. Lalita, maybe you want to respond uh, just live, perhaps, on, um, on the issue that you, uh, that was raised. Um, I just wanted to be brief here. Um, I think when we, when we talk about um, constructive approaches like building centers and stuff, um, I've al I've always been quite skeptical about this um, because um, I do believe that centers, uh, most centers, are not accessible to general public. Um, so when you think about the achievement of any center at all, not not even not just on Asia or Africa. Um, you need to keep um, the public um, with you at all times. So um, what a lot of centers in Thailand do these days, because during this COVID, um, podcasts are very effective and everyone wants to listen to podcasts. They go on YouTube on a regular basis. So I think um, what you can do, what anybody here can do, is to make use of uh, of this technology. Well, it's it's very basic, you know. Podcasts are not actually high tech technology, but um, because of this crisis that what we're in right now, um, it has become increasingly, increasingly important every day. Um, so what we can do, and this is what I'm thinking, is um, we just want to do a thirty minute um, podcast. Um, probably weekly, and then we can keep educating um, the general public rather than um, educating ourselves, you know. And I think what we need is we also think about how to simplify our ideas and our concepts and to make it more um, accessible to people who just who don't understand um you know decolonizing decolonization whatsoever for for instance i'll give you an example from thailand um you know i, I feel a bit estranged here because um we in thailand are not familiar with the term decolonizing at all uh, maybe some do but most people wouldn't understand what it is because they would say hey thailand has never been colonized by any um european power before um, so, you know, what, what we can do is basically just to keep educating, um, people that what colonization is. And I think you probably emphasize this term more. I, I, I keep hearing this and sometimes I feel like why, why you guys keep talking about this all the time? We should, you know, think about the future. We, we should. Um, think about what we're going to do in the next uh, five years, 10 years. And, um, you know, we, we're not here. We're not talking about um, establishing centers, making podcasts, uploading videos on YouTube um, for decolon decolonizing anything. We, we are just educating people. We are doing this for the greater goods of the public. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, and another thing I, I would like to reflect is sometimes you undermine, um, I mean, I don't really know what to say, but um, with the political situation happening now in Thailand, um, sometimes uh, when you don't expect things to happen, 
it does happen <laughs> quite naturally. For example, right now, um, the public in Thailand is, is very excited, excited about learning anything about communism. Um, this trend of communism, this trend of socialism, um, it's coming back. It keeps coming back. And the youth, Uh, wants to learn about this. Of course, they, they don't want their country to be communist, but um, they learn about this. They, they're trying to, to talk about, they try to debate on um, what mode of government, or what mode of politics is best for them for, for their future. So yeah, um, what I really wanted to say, I wanted to be brief, but <laughs> I'm sorry, um, is We shouldn't really be thinking about ourselves anymore. We we should think about the world because we 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 here we're talking about this because we want to change the world. We want to change the way um, the world thinks about our regions. So yeah, that's it. That's a great point in terms of changing the way that the world thinks about our regions. I think that's a, a nice way of of putting it. I don't know how we're doing for time. That's good. Um, one, I think we have one more. I think Artie uh, wanted to say something. Lloyd. It's Artie. Oh, Lloyd, Lloyd raised his hand. Okay. Uh, Lloyd, you raised your hand a while ago, so I'll give the floor to you. I really wanted to, to you know, uh, piggyback on, on, on Philippe's point about being pragmatic. Uh, and then, and then kind of tie that in with, uh, The issues that were raised by by Abdul Rahman, uh, which could you then question in terms of autonomy and, and all of that? Uh, I think in my experience, uh, you know, with the Center for Asian Studies at the University of Ghana, um, what we have tried to do was to find that balance between autonomy and, and interaction. Uh, and I think the key question always is to be clear where it is that the, 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 the particular space, you know, uh, in the African context, given all of the eddies and the flux, uh, you know, uh, uh, and complications, if you like, about, you know, the decolonial and, and, and all of that, uh, 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 being clear in your head where it is that the institution is headed and the personnel in there. Um, and I think it served as well. Um, because we, we were constantly alert about what we wanted to do and how. Uh, not simply, uh, <clears throat> if you like, we seem to be reproducing the, the, the old approaches. Uh, for example, the, the many people felt, well, China is where the money is, so just go to China uh, uh, and, 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 and raise the, the resources and all of that. But, We thought through the possibilities uh, uh, and, and, and we're really pragmatic about that because consistently what we want to do is to build a center that will engage the world in a way that is, 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 is African-centric but also global in, in, in its outlook. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think Philippe hits it right about the, 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 the pragmatism within the context of the realities that, that we need to, to engage. I mean, the issue of language, for example, you can't say, speak Akan, which is my, my, my native tongue, and, and, and insist on it when the world is speaking English. I mean, he, Philippe, is a Frenchman, but he has to use English, even though they loathe each other. <laughs> so, well, that really is the point, you know. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I want to say, really. Great. Um, anything, do we still have time or what? Um, Arti wanted to say something, she wrote... Arti, oh yes, here. Um, Arti, you wanted to say something so, on, um, on um, 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 Lalita's point? Um, so, yeah, good. Arti. There's a problem maybe with her connection. Arti, uh, maybe you should... Switch off and switch on again, Arti. Because there's two. Okay. Turn it off and turn it on. Yeah, that's a lot, I think. Okay. Look, it's still, yeah, do it again. I think it's from her side. Oh. 
Okay. Well, we have a problem to uh, to get Arti on the line now. Uh, and we also have a problem with Webby who cannot uh, access the sound, unfortunately, who wanted to participate. This is really unfortunate. Uh, no, Arti want to talk. Uh, yeah. Uh, any other com comments? She says she can hear us, but uh, she's can. asking if we if we can hear her. But no. we can. Maybe Arti, if you can send your your question or your comments briefly on the chat, so that uh, Stacy could uh, could read it. Oh, this is really frustrating, really. And maybe if you turn off, you turn it off. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. I can turn off. Yeah. And then turn it on again. No, it's really, it's from her. From yeah, her it's, side. it's, it's from your side, Artie. There's something going wrong. Uh, well, I could say something, uh, at least for our colleague Webby, uh, since he cannot talk, uh, just to say that uh, uh, Lloyd mentioned also uh, the, the contribution of, of uh, University of Zambia and Webby uh, back from the beginning uh, of this process of establishing a platform. Uh, um, this all started because Webby uh, was doing his own research in Vietnam. Uh, and he was somehow the first uh, scholar from Sub-Saharan Africa, one of the first to study on a country like Vietnam, which is again, uh, it's not China or India, it's, uh, and, and the very fact that he engaged on working with, uh, on a subject like uh, uh, Vietnamese history, uh, um, made, made it clear to him that there was a need again from some fundamental basic infrastructure in Africa to be able to embrace the diversity of Asia itself uh, uh, and, and, and recognize uh, what we call Asia in its own uh, uh, complexity uh, uh, at, at the at different level, the, the different uh, countries, different societies. And, and, and that led to later on the discussion of creating this platform Africa, Asia, in an inclusive and, and, and multiple dimension, uh, uh, and by stressing the um, the cultural, the, the, the human and local uh, dimensions, uh, as a way also to overcome those uh, those uh, constructs uh, that are often the um, the outcome of empire uh, in in its in, in, in their different uh, uh, forms. And and, uh, and and so I think that's what a number of us are trying to achieve from our own uh, uh, perspectives and our own uh, uh, location. So we make that one in three minutes. So rather than the rest. Arzi did put in her comment. Okay. Did you want me to read it? Yeah, try. Oh, yes. Um, just finally, before we have to uh, round off, Arzi uh, typed in the chat and she said that, I just wanted to say that in the clamor of centers, we forget that we can actually still work together through the networks that we already have. By somehow countering and even subverting the timetable of the university by creating new curricular spaces which normalize and make common sense, as Rohit said, the idea of a trans-regional, but still local axis of knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Three minutes. Okay, well, uh, we are wrapping up now this, uh, this discussion. Thank you for everybody. And sorry for all the difficulties sometimes to uh, get everybody on board. And, and of course, we value even more the need to meet again in person. And I really hope that many of us will meet again in uh, Kyoto in 2000, 
21, not 12, 21 uh, for ICAS, August 24, 27, uh, 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 21, and that we will also meet hopefully soon afterward in uh, San Luis, in Senegal, for the third uh, Africa Asia a New Access of Knowledge uh, conference. Thank you very much again, and uh, we will keep in touch. Keep in touch. Take care. Bye bye.